What if I told you you could free yourself from Google Photos? By that, I mean post and back up all of your photos and videos for you and your entire family completely for free. And you even get the cool AI features that Google Photos gives you, like face detection and grouping, all local and free. Let's talk about it. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I am Dylan, the Techno Giz Guy. We are gonna set up Image today. Image is a Google Photos replacement, and it is a complete Google Photos replacement. Built around Docker primarily. You can run this on any low-powered machine running Docker. It has multiple containers, but a couple of those containers include the server, the database, and the machine learning server. The machine learning server is a local image model that will detect faces and group them just like Google Photos. Image will also catalog your photos by date, place, any kind of tags that are embedded in the photo when you take it. Image will happily read all those tags and catalog all of them. It has multi-user support. So if you're using this for your family, everyone can have their own little account and the admins can easily go in and check on the other accounts. It's all around a great solution. It's an all-in-one replacement for Google Photos. And in my opinion, it's been almost a perfect drop-in replacement. Let's set it up. So there are a couple different ways to set this up. The recommended way is to use the Docker Compose instructions. I will leave this link down in the bottom as always, so that way you guys can get here. Uh, they also support Kubernetes. They support Unraid. Looks like they have a built-in like Unraid stack. They have a TrueNAS stack, which is really cool. I'm actually gonna use the experimental install script. It says that it's not recommended, but I went through this script and it basically is just a script running all of the same exact commands. So I'm gonna copy this one-liner script. I already have a terminal open. If you're running on Windows and you have the subsystem for Linux installed, you can type in bash and get into a Linux terminal. You need to have Docker installed. If you're using this on a Linux server or something like that, you don't have to worry about that first step because you'll already have a bash terminal. I already made a directory for this, so image YouTube. See, there's nothing in this directory at all. I'm gonna paste that one-liner in there Okay, I ran the one-liner, and that's it. It's done. In theory, we should be able to go to localhost 2283, or if you're doing this on a server, you're going to go to the IP of your server. Not that hard, guys. When you click through here, you click into the getting started. Once you get in there, it's going to ask you to set up your admin account. So I'm going to set mine up, set up a super secure password. Totally do not make your password password. And my name is Dylan. From that, we're going to click sign up, and that's it. Save that, and we'll log in. Once you're in, you get greeted by this screen. Right off the gate, my favorite thing, you get to choose your theme. And it defaults to dark mode, so we're just going to leave it like that. Privacy settings. This is really nice. They tell you exactly what data they have to reach out to the internet for. Image can be run completely locally, without any internet connection whatsoever. Right here, though, you can see that if you want map access, so it will actually grab the geolocation tag from the photo and add that to the map, that uses a cloud API key to reach out to find that map. And the version check straight up just tells you that you have to be able to communicate with GitHub. It's just checking your GitHub repo to make sure there's not a later version. This is all good. So I'm going to leave this stock. Compared to how much data Google is sifting from your photos, this is nothing. I'm gonna keep the storage template engine disabled. They say that it can cause problems. I don't even really know what it does. Once you're done, you are presented with this. So I don't have any photos in here, but let's do a tour before we get some in here. So this looks very reminiscent of Google Photos, if you've ever used Google Photos. You can access your account up here. You can come to administration. You can add more users, see the different jobs. Uh, these are all different batch jobs that will run at various points. So while when you're uploading, this will also actually transcode all of your video and pictures that you upload into it to a lower quality, only slightly. Um, I believe it's using H.265. So the quality is really not that much of a loss, but you're saving a ton of size. 
it's the same thing that Google is doing, except they're downscaling all your images to 720p, unless you're paying them more to keep the full quality. This, at least you keep the full resolution. You're just, we're just transcoding it to another format. So that way it's smaller. You can keep some settings. I'm not going to go through all these settings, but you guys can look through here. A lot of this stuff, it just kind of works. Um, there's no fancy reverse proxying things or anything like that. If you want to reverse proxy this like I do, all you have to do is set it up in your Cloudflare or your Nginx proxy manager, whatever reverse proxy manager you're using, they, all you have to do is point it here and it will just work. Even uploading over their app. They do have an Android app. I do not know if they have an iPhone app. External libraries is really cool. So while you can upload the photos here to image and have them be a part of that ecosystem, you can also connect an external library of photos. And what I like to do is you can download a dump of your Google Drive, the entire thing. Uh, if you go into your Google Photos and go into there, you can actually download a complete or 100% dump of all your photos and videos. It takes a while. It takes a while, depending on how many photos and videos you have, because they have to compress them all into a zip folder and then you have to download that. So if you're like me and you've been using Google Photos for years, that process took, I think, 45 minutes for it to compress and download that zip file of all of my Google Photos stuff. But then I was able to just dump that folder, that one single folder, into my NAS and then point the image at that folder and point it as an external directory. I'll kind of show you how you can do that. So when you set up an external directory, you set up who owns that library because it's going to act as an independent library. You're going to come into edit import paths and then just type out the path to wherever that folder of media is, whether that's on a mount in a SIFF drive or on your local machine, whatever you're doing. So you can use the external library to add your old photos and then you back your new photos up through the app on your phone or through this web page. All right, guys. So I'm just gonna come in here, upload a photo, and I'm gonna select all of these folders, all these ones in this folder here. We got some images now. So most of these are like just BS images, um, but they're all AI generated. I just had it download like a bunch. Uh, so yeah, you can see it looks a lot like Google Drive. Now there's not a whole lot of faces here. Like this is a face um, and it will probably flag that as a face. Uh, it does not happen instantly, neither does Google. So over the you know a couple days, it will see a face even flag this bear as a face. I say that because both Image and Google flag my dog as a face. Uh, so I actually have a grouping of pictures just for my puppy. So it might see this bear as a face and it might group her too. ChatGPT didn't do too good today, but that's okay. So you can see though, we have a complete isolated ecosystem. here. So the map isn't gonna work because none of these photos are tagged with locations. But you can come in here. Really like this one. So I'm going to heart that. Now it will show up in my favorites. Just like Google Photos, you can make albums. You can select multiple photos, make an album, then to a shared album. You can even share right from here. So if I want to say, I want to share this, this lovely picture of this bear. Let anyone with the link see it, uh, the bear. You can even password these and you can require a password or not. You can also just allow it to be public. You can even set the link to expire. So say in 30 minutes, why not? And obviously I'm doing local host, but if you were doing an IP address or you had this reverse proxy, you would get your reverse proxy through here. Now, now I can open this in a new tab. And it's just a simple little image and you can even save the image from here. It's not maybe as elegant as Google Photos, but definitely it works and it's completely free. Okay guys, why would you do this instead of just using the free tier of Google or even paying and having a you know big fancy cloud subscription? Well, 
The answer is in my question, the cloud. Yes, this can be made to be public over the internet, but it's not the cloud, it's my cloud. Because this data, even though it can be publicly accessed after you put a password in through my servers, the data is still my data. It's on my hard drives. And yes, some people might think that that's worse because if something happens, then I lose it. But think of it this way. Every photo and video you upload to Google Photos is 100%, I guarantee, being used by Google to train AI models. Let that sink in right now. Right now, we are in an AI race. All the big technology companies have one big problem that they are fighting over. Getting synthetic data and gathering training data for AI. Now, Google Photos has done machine learning for years. The face detection thing has been a thing for years. I guarantee they have been sifting all of that data to train other machine learning models. And now they're probably using it to train their Gemini AI models. Some people may not care about that, but quite frankly, if you're gonna train a model on my photos, at the very least, I want you to tell me that you're gonna do it. And that's the thing is they don't tell you that you're gonna do it. I'm sure their terms and conditions say that they're able to do so if they want to. Let's say you and your wife uh, you guys make uh, spicy content, we'll call it. And maybe you don't give it away to anybody. It's just for you guys. I know a lot of people are weird like that. How do you feel knowing that you're putting that on a cloud and probably a lot of Google employees can access it pretty easily? Uh, and they're at least most definitely training AI models on it. So there's probably somewhere uh, an AI model that has gigabytes of memory filled with, uh, this is a family friendly channel, or we try to be. So, I mean, you, you know what they're doing. You know what they're doing. Do you want the AI knowing what you're doing? Do you want Google knowing what you're doing? If you're going to film those videos, why don't you back those videos up to your local server where nobody can go? The AI that runs on this server is local. If you do, if you run this on a really low powered computer, it will still work, but it's going to take even longer to do a lot of that machine learning. If you put a GPU into this, and if you read through their instruction guides, they actually, in the Docker Compose section, they say that if you are using a nice GPU to download a certain hardware encoding file, that will actually allow this to use the GPU to transcode the hardware and do that machine learning. By the way, guys, the machine learning model that this is running is not anything big. It's a super condensed model that's designed to look for faces. And that's that's what it's good at. I have run this on a VM. Actually, right now I am running it on a VM uh, in my... So this right here, guys, is my production system. So this is a VM on my Proxmox array. It's got six gigs of RAM, uh, eight cores of CPU. Uh, and it runs Linux. So is, there's nothing special here. I gave it a 64 gig hard disk. The reason the hard disk is so small is because it's connecting to my NAS to store everything and pull that file from. So the main OS drive doesn't have to be that big. But if I come over here to the summary, you can see that really the only thing we're using a lot of is the memory because it has to load a lot of that model into RAM as well as Six gigs isn't all that much RAM. That could just be some overhead from the Linux operating system because I'm running Ubuntu on here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe if you want to see anything. If you have any ideas or anything I mentioned that you want to see me do a video on, drop it in the comment below. If you have any questions, concerns, comment below. I'm always reading comments, guys. I'm always trying to reply to them. I'm always giving them likes. The comments really do help. And you guys, I have to say thank you. I really have to say thank you. You guys have been killing it. I started this channel and literally the first few videos that I posted, you guys were just killing it on. Um, I'm super grateful for the response that I've seen on a lot of these videos, even the ones that aren't performing as well. Uh, I'm still proud of them because they're videos I was happy to make and all my videos are videos I'm super happy and excited to make because I'm a nerd. I love this. 
this is this is my bread and butter, right? When I'm not working my day job or in the gym, I'm I'm doing this. This is this is my stuff, man. I love it. it makes me happy. Um, it rages me at times. I cannot tell you how many times I've had to fix the server at 3 a.m. But it comes with the territory, and secretly I love it. Guys, I will see you in the next video. Keep it peaceful.